Hey everyone, in this episode we'll be painting a concept sketch loosely based on the Elden Ring game and as usual we'll start very simple and end up with the final result. Also stay tuned till the end because we'll break down some of the composition ideas I used in the whole process. My name is Victor, I'm a concept artist working for film and games and I really hope you guys will enjoy this video and find it helpful. Alright, and we're beginning with the story and since we're talking about Elden Ring, it's a Souls game and it's very unforgiving towards any player's mistakes any miscalculations, you keep dying and dying in this game like it's your job and this is how you progress eventually, this is how you learn the game's secrets and eventually you're completing it. And I also wanted to incorporate this in our keyframe, right? And I figured I should place the character in a very tough spot, very tense situation with an encounter with monsters, zombies around him and any misstep could eventually lead to his death. So right now I'm roughly sketching this whole idea, this whole scenario and I'm creating a couple of grids just to help me at least semi-accurately build some structures around it. So I'm just along these grids I'm building a bridge in the middle ground, one in the background and also uh, some sort of building a castle in the background. Uh, I'm also spending a little bit more time on our characters by emphasizing the structure a little bit, putting some marks that will eventually help me, you know, work those details. And as soon as the sketch is done, and by the way, for me personally, the drawing part is the most difficult, right? Because if you have a good drawing, if your composition works, then the, the part with the values, uh, adding color, you know, working with the edges, that stuff is much easier if first stage works well. So as soon as we're done with the sketch, I'm placing some rough color for the environment, for the background. And since we already have a story in our mind, right, uh, we can already deduce what kind of atmosphere, what kind of mood we want to have. So obviously I was going for something moody, something very gloomy, uh, with some fog maybe, you know, really like dark tones and light is only, you know, a very low key image overall. And we are blocking in our main shapes right now. I, uh, I finished up with the bridge uh, system, that castle in the background. I worked a bit more on the foreground and I'm trying to develop this rock structure in the, in the foreground. You see, I was trying to get some of that um, yellow, uh, sort of like moss, greenish yellow moss uh, as well, just to break down these colds. And uh, as soon as I'm, you know, I already worked a bit on the background, I'm moving back to our characters and I'm trying to block in the values for them. You have to make a decision and decide how much do you want to push those values. Um, I kind of started a bit aggressive with the foreground. I pushed the darks quite a bit, but uh, I will try to control it in the future and make sure that everything works well, everything is balanced. So I don't push the darks so much that I have just a black silhouette in the foreground. Uh, sometimes I see this happening in uh, some art. Alright, so we've been spending some time on the character and now it's time to work on the enemy as well. And in this case, first thing I'm doing is find out all the areas that are occluded from light and I'm darkening them a little bit and slowly building a little bit of form. And uh, I also wanted to design some sort of armor because it's not just a mindless zombie, it was like a soldier before or something like that. And you can also see that I'm adjusting the pose a little bit. I wanted to make that angle that it's creating a little bit more dramatic so that you can feel like it's being impaled by the spear. And I'm also thinking how to add some, you know, elements uh, flying off the enemy uh, at the impact. So in, in order to emphasize the force of the hit and things like that. So I'm adding some bits of debris and uh, uh, smaller elements here and there. I'm spending some time on the environment as well. Um, granted, I think I'm gonna leave it uh, not very defined, especially the, the castle. I, want, I really wanted to unify it and sort of add like a little bit of mystery, a fog overall.
By the way guys, don't forget there is a free brush pack in the description and for those of you that want to improve even faster, I'm uploading monthly full video process tutorials on Patreon together with PSD files and even more brushes, so don't forget to check it out. And right now I'm also trying to add some sort of a heavy fog in the in the middle ground that's gonna connect the planes a bit better. I thought it's like an element that is missing because in the game itself, it tons of areas, actually most of them, if it's not an interior, uh, it, it ha they have fog and uh, like a very thick atmosphere and it's very nice. So in this case, I'm uh, just take a soft brush and uh, add a little bit here and there. Um, I'm also trying to add a few more enemies so that, uh, as I spoke in the beginning, I really wanted to to show like an element of despair that the enemies are crawling out of all out of all the places and surrounding our character. And you can see, uh, basically, the procedure, the process is very simple. I work with two values at first. I'm uh, describing the overall shape, and then I'm adding areas uh, areas of shadow. And this way, I'm slowly describing the form as well. And again. Um, another feature of the game is actually that uh, everything you see in the environment, like you know, as far as it can get, uh, those are areas that you can later on visit and actually encounter enemies, find treasure and so on. So I also wanted to sort of uh, add this in the keyframe too, and that's why I'm placing some enemies uh, in the, further in the background and maybe some flying creatures too. Um, trying to think about the composition tank, trying to frame the composition a little bit better. And in order to have a feeling of scale, I also added a bigger enemy and then nearby smaller enemies so you can understand that that guy is like really big. All right, now let's quickly have a look at some of the composition ideas I used throughout the whole process. All right, so when we're looking at the composition, I just quickly wanted to mention a couple of things. And let's talk about our focal point, which is this area right here. And right away, you can notice that there is the biggest amount of value contrast right here between these two values, right? And also another thing I wanted to mention is some framing devices I use, and I'm mainly talking about these gaps in the bridge, right? That are framing our characters. This one more evident than uh, the second one. And when we're looking at the environment, I 
sort of wanted to create a line, a force that is pushing towards the area of impact and it's starting somewhere here and it goes like this. And uh, this way we're kind of creating this significant contrast and uh, trying to add a little bit of a dynamic feel to the whole image. And it's enforced by the position of the bridges, right? This one leads towards there and then this one leads towards our background. In return it kind of enforces this whole circular thing. And also leads the viewer's eye towards our second focal point, which is the guys over there on the bridge. And also notice that I added this uh, flying creatures as well by design because I wanted to frame the whole thing so that your eye doesn't wander around towards that area and instead is going across the bridge and returning to our second focal point and then moving towards our first focal point again. So this in return is sort of creating a dynamic feel and doesn't let the image be uh, simply static. And these are just a couple of things that I wanted to mention and I think might be helpful to you. Thank you guys so much for watching, I hope you enjoyed this video and found it helpful. If you did, please consider liking and subscribing, it helps a lot. Also don't forget to ask any questions you have in the comment section. Thanks again for watching till the end and I hope to see you soon in the next one.